the U.S. vice president has ended her week-long trip across Africa. Kamala Harris met with Zambia's, Tanzania's and Ghana's heads of state during her three-leg journey. If the influence of other foreign powers loomed over her trip, she tried to deepen and reframe U.S. relationships with the continent. She highlighted major steps in that direction on Saturday, April 1. My visit has convinced me more than ever that we must all around the globe appreciate and understand the importance of investing in African ingenuity and creativity. The type I have seen during the course of this trip, she said. In my meetings with the presidents of Ghana and Tanzania, and here in Zambia, we have launched new initiatives to strengthen our business ties. We have also advanced our work to support democracy and good governance on the continent, which will invariably create greater stability, predictability, the type that businesses require and need to invest, she added. In each of these engagements, it has been clear there was a strong desire from leaders on this continent, from young entrepreneurs on this continent to increase investments on this continent. Digital Access to Africa's Economy If Harris acknowledged some places on the continent lead the world in digital solutions, she laid out an agenda for partnerships in digital solutions as she pointed to discrepancies across Africa. For these, she vowed U.S. support. In other places on the continent, we see that there is a lag and that there are many who lag behind and we must be clear about the challenges presented to close these gaps and then commit to take action because solutions are within sight and within reach. The United States have ramped up efforts to re-engage with African countries after last year's U.S.-Africa summit. President Joe Biden said he intends to visit this year as well. President Biden, through these initiatives, has pledged to work with the United States Congress to invest $350 million and to facilitate nearly half a billion dollars in development financing, to make sure that people across the continent can participate in the digital and global economy. After speaking during a roundtable discussion with business and philanthropic leaders in Lusaka, Kamala Harris departed for Washington. Harris's visit is the latest in a string of visits to Africa by high-profile U.S. officials. She visited the Cape Coast Elmina Castle to reiterate on the slave trade. She visited places of interest in Ghana, Zambia, and Tanzania. She had a warm welcome by the African leaders of these three countries the, with their rich the, culture the and tradition welcome ceremonies. The that is ceremonies. happening there and what should be our engagement for so many, I think, at this point, obvious reasons. And it was also in follow-up to the U.S.-Africa Leaders Summit that we hosted here in December of last year, where our President Joe Biden made clear and said from a podium, the United States is all in on Africa. And so it was my intention to reinforce that point and to explain what that means, all in. All in as a partner, not to, to, to go in with a sense of like, this is about our benevolence. No, this is about a partnership with the continent and its leaders, tapping into all that is there. So the speech I gave, as you know, was at the Black Star at the monument, um, it, where the, it, independence is honored and it's about freedom and justice. And the speech was then, um, the emphasis was on the excitement that we feel, and then to also talk about, in particular, then what we can do to uplift a couple of specific areas of focus for me in terms of the trip and going forward. And so one is the importance of digital inclusion, because let's be clear, 21st century economies require digital inclusion for the economic empowerment of anyone and all people. And so thinking about how we can then uplift and bring investment to the continent, to work with those who are already doing the work on the continent, to increase digital inclusion. I highlighted in particular also what we must do to specifically address the economic empowerment of women. Mm -hmm. Understanding as it, 
but just understanding a universal truth, which is you, you increase the economic capacity of women and families benefit, communities benefit, all of society benefits when we do that. And it was about also, again, in my role as vice president, being there to uplift the importance of good governance and democracy. And so I had bilateral meetings, which are just one-on-one -on -one meetings with the three presidents of the three countries. And among the topics that I raised and we discussed is the importance of good governance and democracy. So raising that it is important when we're looking at in particular private investment and US private investment on the continent that there's gonna be certain priorities that include, we're gonna wanna know that there's freedom of the press that rule of law, human rights, that these will be issues for Americans in terms of shareholders or our consumers to know that we're engaged in a way that there are certain shared priorities in terms of those goals. So these were the, the areas of focus for the trip as captured in the second day that we were there with the speech that I gave at Black Star Monument. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. I think we're sharing the mic. Old school. Um, I really want to ask you uh, a bit about the Ghana portion of the trip. We're in this museum of history and remembrance, a place from the beginning that was committed to the unvarnished truth. And I know you visited Cape Coast Castle yeah. in Ghana, and you said some powerful words, uh, which are not only about pain, but survival. I was watching it today, and it said, quote, history must be learned. And we must then be guided by what we know also to be the history of those who survived in the Americas and in the Caribbean. Can you tell us about your experience at the door of no return and what that meant to you? You know, in many ways, I'm still processing it. Um, it's one thing to read about it and learn history as most of us have since the day we were born and then to be at that site, which is one, sadly, of many such sites. And, um, you know, the, the tour guide, I don't want to call him a tour guide, he was a historian, um, taking us through the various dungeons, right? Um, the section for men, the section for women, the section for the troublemakers, where pregnant women were kept because they had been raped. Um, the details of the fact that women were being raped by their captors and then the baby taken away on the day she gave birth so she could be sold, the mother. And then if the baby lived, would be put to work in that very place. Um, it's, it's like the, this monument to all that we are discussing today. There is something about being in a physical space that if you have learned about what it represents, you feel what it represents. And that's how um, I thought it was, it, it, it's a place of horror. It's a place of horror. Because let's remember, first of all, people were kidnapped from 